All right, so that may have looked like one big Sri Lankan house party, but it really wasn't. There was a large, large group of Sri Lankan protesters and they are storming the presidential palace there, demanding the resignation of the president. And the reasons are because there's economic unrest, that's right. There is so much going on there in Sri Lanka that is not serving the people. And so the people have taken it into their own hands to push for change. Now the protesters, well, they said that they are not going to leave the palace until the president steps down and they have seen some changes come to pass without a doubt. This is what the BBC says. So President Garabaya Rajavska said that he would step down on July 13th, according to an announcement made by a parliament speaker on Saturday. But the president has not been seen or made a public, a public statement himself. Now military sources have told the BBC that he is currently on a Navy vessel in Sri Lankan waters, which are probably the safest place for him to be it seems, cuz he damn sure can't come home. Now for months, protesters have been frustrated with the president's economic mismanagement of the nation. And this is BBC's in, uh, take on on it. So soaring inflation has meant some foods, medications and fuel are in short supply. There are rolling blackouts and ordinary people have taken to the streets in anger with many blaming the Rajapska family and their government for the situation. Yeah, if you see your president and those in leadership positions doing just fine while you're struggling and those around you are struggling, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed too. And so we know that these Sri Lankans have gathered outside the presidential palace and many inside the palace this past weekend as these events unfolded. Now the extraordinary events on Saturday, they appeared to be the culmination of really months of many peaceful protests in Sri Lanka, basically people weren't getting what they needed and their government was not responding. Huge crowds converged on the official residence of President Rajavska, uh, chanting slogans and waving the national flag before breaking through the barricades and entering the property. Footage online showed people roaming through the house and swimming in the president's pool, while others emptied out a chest of drawers, picked through the president's belongings and used his luxury bathroom. Uh, it's basically just chaos erupting in the streets as the Sri Lankan army ended up opening fire. Uh, at protesters over the wall of the palace. That's right, things definitely seem to turn violent there. Now, um, Jessica, I, I guess, how does this sit with you so far? Because I, I do definitely appreciate the fact that these individuals took matters into their hands, they pushed back. But I know part of me to some extent also feels it's very almost 160, of course, minus all the white supremacy and whatnot, and also the completely illegitimate rationale. But still, it just, it, it, feels, it feels like a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It feels like a lot. I think it's it's interesting to see the folks in Sri Lanka in the president's house so calm, just kind of like they're at an estate sale or something walking through. It wasn't really violent and to get this response from the military is kind of shocking. I mean, of course, the military has no idea what's going on in there. But it's always concerning when we see the destruction of property seen as violence that should be met with the kind of violence that can take away human life. That doesn't sit right with me, those two things just, just don't feel equal. And they weren't even really destroying property from what we see in that video. But I think the people in Sri Lanka have every right to be upset because what we've seen there is that since the civil war in 2009, they've essentially continued, the Sri Lankan government has continued the kind of IMF style economic development, which really isn't serving the people of Sri Lanka. I mean, they don't have food sovereignty, they've got a lack of energy sovereignty as well. They're just essentially exporting low value raw goods. 
And so it's really not helping the people of Sri Lanka to experience record inflation as a result of the lack of robust economic policies. The administration there really hasn't done much to make Sri Lanka a really independent nation. And instead, what they're doing is exporting raw goods, which benefits you know the, the global north. And so if I was a Sri Lankan, I would be very upset that I am personally harmed by having an economy that only serves the people who are using our labor, using our land and resources and exporting these raw goods. So the largest economies in the world can benefit. Yes, absolutely, because the reality is when you don't meet the needs of the people and also when they are in need of medication, food, fuel, access to resources, the things that they pay their taxes and uplift you to be able to ensure that they receive, then you're gonna get responses like this. This isn't like in 1-6 where you had a coup of individuals trying to overthrow the government because they didn't like a fair and democratic election. This is a fact that people's needs have not been met while leaders have been filling their coffers and enjoying their life and livelihood. And so this type of response, it really kind of says something to, um, uh, you know, because you see how this was such a unified response from the Sri Lankan people. And when you see a lot of the things that go on in the United States and that you wish would get that unified response and that true push for, uh, it really kind of shows you how it's done when you want to make effective change. And you also have good and sufficient basis for it. And I do wish that America showed that unified solidarity more in pushing for change because maybe then and only then that we would get what we deserve as a democracy. And before we go to break, I will note that the US Secretary of State here, Anthony Blinken, that he's largely blaming Russia for restricting the export of grains from Ukraine contributing to Sri Lanka's turmoil. I don't think you can blame everything on Russia, but hey, whatever you need, to sleep at night, Mr. Blinken, you do you.